I feel like Vince Vaughn in that movie with Reese Witherspoon for Christmases. <laughs> Whenever I get in front of this camera, phone, phone with the camera. <laughs> Whenever he got in front of a microphone in that movie, he would just freeze. And it was the most hilarious thing, especially to see Vince Vaughn freeze. But uh, every time I get in front of the camera, I feel like him. Like deer in headlights. <laughs> so Lord, I ask that you would help me, help me to be bold today and to give me words. Give me the words, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Charity and make whatever from your fashion to your comfort. Anything you need, know she got it covered. It's like magic. Never doubt the passion, thread the work, never lacking. Take notes, need a mover out of habit. Nick girl magic. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all hear that intro? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I love like a catchy little intro to a podcast. That one was created by a friend of ours. My husband and I have a friend who's an artist. His name is Dom. Um, and I asked him to create just like a little intro for me because he did that for their podcast. They have a wrestling podcast. He was like, yeah, I got you. He sat down and did like a quick little interview with me. And like a week later, he came back with that, that intro. And I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, give my podcast some flavor. <laughs> so thank you, Dom, on Instagram. He is good God Dom. If you're interested in having him do something for you for your podcast or what have you, Look him up. He's awesome. With that being said, welcome to the Knit Girl Magic podcast. I think this is episode five where I sit down and talk to you about what I'm knitting. I'm so excited to be back. There's always like this surge of nerves, but excitement to be back in front of you with my friends. I feel like I, I think like the entire month because I'm trying to do this like once a month but the entire month I'm knitting and I'm like I can't wait to tell my friends you know my knitting friends this and this and this and then I forget I always have these Vince Vaughn moments so forgive me anyway this podcast is about knitting as you have already gathered and I will be talking to you about what I've been knitting something that I want to knit. Before we talk about the knitting, I do want to make sure that I remember to say thank you so much to all of you who have subscribed recently, to all of you that have watched my videos recently. I just appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me and I'm just so excited that you're here. And for those of you who enjoy my segments with my son, Aiden, he will be making an appearance at the end of this video. So stick around for eight, Aiden's 15 minutes of um, stardom. It's never really 15 minutes, but if you want to kind of catch up with him and see what he's been up to, um, stick around for that. Now, knitting, 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 knitting. Let's get into it. Today... I think I'm going to go a little bit out of order because I want to talk about my sweaters before I talk about anything else because that's what I have been knitting on the most over the past month. If you watched last month's episode or my previous episode, um, I talked to you about a sweater experiment that I was going to be doing. So I wanted to see what would be the difference if I knit the same sweater in a superwash merino yarn and then a non-superwash yarn. And so that is my great sweater experiment and I'm just so excited to share with you how that's been going that I wanted to start with that today. So I've got, you know, my junk gathered around me. This is not junk. This is priceless, timeless wool excuse me so i've got my stuff gathered around me and i grabbed the one that or the sweater that i have knit the most or have made the most progress on first and that is this one look sorry let me be still <laughs> so this sweater and the other one that i'm going to show you is the harlow sweater by designer k Dree. This one 
is, you can probably tell, the non-superwash yarn. It's not merino, but it's non-superwash, 100% virgin wool. And the yarn that I'm using for this is Fisherman's Wool. This is the ball band. Um, so let me look at the details so I can make sure that I give them to you correctly. It is 100% virgin wool. Um, it comes in these huge, huge balls. You can tell by the ball band. And it's just a really good budget friendly yarn. And this comes in 465 yards. I don't know how much it weighs. Oh, 227 grams. And it's just so much yarn. I have had to go ahead and um, add on the second ball of yarn. If this isn't really a ball, but you know, this oblong, whatever shape this is. Um, so I am onto the second ball of yarn and I got three and I know that I'll have plenty of yarn. So for this sweater, I decided to make the size medium, which is the third size, I believe. And the reason that I did that was because when I did my gauge swatch for this, yeah, y'all remember I did my gauge swatch, blocked it, all that good stuff. Um, the yarn actually seemed to, okay, let me try, let me think back, think back, get this gauge stuff right because it can be so tricky. Um, so it seemed like I was getting gauge at first and then when I blocked it, it seemed like my stitches kind of drew in a little bit, which means it like I had more stitches within the four inch swatch, which means that it, you know, shrunk, got smaller. So I wanted to make sure that I made a good decision after that swatch. And so instead of going up a needle size, because I did that for the other sweater, I decided just to make a larger size for this one um, based on my measurements. And so I think this sweater is designed to have about um, 10 inches, up to 10 inches of positive ease, maybe six to 10 inches of positive ease and the last time that I measured my chest circumference I think it was around like 36 inches um, so going up that size would give me um, the amount of positive ease that the designer wants you to have in this pattern or you can have in this pattern so what have I been wanting to tell my yarn friends about this how am I liking? I know my girl from um, the Quirky Monday podcast was wanting to know, hey girl, um, how am I liking this sweater? I'm loving it. I am loving it. I mean, that's why I've made the most progress on this one. I'll show you the other one in just a moment. But um, this is one that I can't seem to put down. It definitely does have that rustic, you know, untreated wool feel to it. Um, I am not wearing it yet, so I cannot say, you know, is it scratchy or anything like that. That will just have to come, you know, when I've had time to wear it. But I still think it's quite soft and quite squishy. Um, I love just how substantial it is compared to like superwash yarn. I, I just know that when I wear this, I'm going to be super warm. I, I can tell. It's just so substantial you know that's the best best word I can think of um, but I'm just really really enjoying it so so far I have you know when you do the drop shoulder construction for a sweater you don't start with the neckline but you you know knit the the back panel front panel connect all of that um, so I did all of that and I started knitting the body and then when I ran out of yarn I figured it was a good time to do the neckline and I really do love the neckline for this it's got like a dramatic I don't know if you can tell though because this yarn is so busy <laughs> it is so busy but it's about four inches long no a little under four inches three something um, so it's it's gonna be come up very high on my neck and I really do like that some techniques that I really love in this pattern is the back little ridge line. It's probably really super hard to tell. 
Um, but I don't know, maybe you can see it right there, that little braid going across. Love that feature of this sweater. And then I also like um, the dramatic neckline and the pattern calls for you to use. It's not a tubular bind off. What is it? Um, Italian, the Italian bind off. So that was my first time using that technique and I really did enjoy it. Like couldn't believe it took like so much time to do and I definitely had to find a tutorial to figure out how to do it but it gives you that nice rolled edge bind off um, maybe you can see it I don't know but I really did enjoy that and it it put me in the mind of um, the Kitchener stitch when I do that for my socks so it was a technique that I was really scared to try just because of um, podcasters and you know people online on Instagram and whatever when they mention like a tubular bind off or an Italian bind off it just seems kind of difficult but it wasn't bad at all you know if you've done the Kitchener stitch for a bind off then you could definitely do the Italian bind off so I did enjoy that and I will um, most likely continue to use that in the future it was kind of hard to do with just all the busyness going on um, with the colors of this yarn. I always, I did forget to say, I knew I was going to forget to say, the colorway for this is Oak Tweed. Oak Tweed. I know I forgot to say that last time too. Girl, get it together. People want to know what color. Oak Tweed. And this is non-dyed, untreated wool. My first experience knitting a sweater or you know something of this size with wool like this and I really am loving it loving it so I'm almost ready to do the ribbing for the bottom of the sweater or the front and back hem it is a split hem so I'll do that and then I'll pick up my sleeves knit those and then I'll be done with this one love it it'll be too warm to wear it I mean yeah when I'm finished but next winter <laughs> next fall so the next sweater this is still the Harlow sweater sorry if I'm talking with my head down let me just make sure I get all the stuff so this is the other sweater that I'm doing for this experiment exact same sweater different yarn Harlow sweater by K Dree and you can probably tell, and if you watched me last time, that this is the Superwash yarn. Superwash Merino. Let me go ahead and get that tag so that I can give you specifics. This yarn is Malabrigo Rios. And that's their worsted yarn. And it is 100% Superwash Merino wool. There's no nylon, you know. Nothing combined with it, just that 100% superwash merino wool. And it comes in 210 yards for 100 grams. I think I got like six of these. Don't know how many I'm going to use. We shall see. So, this one is a little shorter than my other one. I'll hold them both up just a tad bit it's really not that much difference now that I have them both up together and the reason that it is a little shorter is because I haven't knit on this one quite as much I really was very shocked that I liked knitting with the 100% wool um, that is non superwash I will say that I do like the feel of knitting with this I mean the reason that I wanted to knit with it in the first place is because it's so incredibly super super soft so I do enjoy just like cuddling up with this when I knit with it oh the color is grease by the way grease <laughs> my Spanish is, sorry <laughs> anyway it's gray it's gray <laughs> Um, but I do enjoy just the softness of a super wash yarn, um, the way it glides on the needles. It's just super comfortable for my hands. So that is probably the one thing that I really love about it. What I don't like using 
the superwash merino yarn for um, is because I have to alternate skeins. So right now I just have one ball attached. But when you use superwash merino wool, and of course most of you will probably know this, um, because it's hand dyed, you have a lot of inconsistencies with the color. So in an effort to not have big blocks of color um, all throughout my sweater, I had to alternate skeins to get a more consistent color. And even still, you know, you can see just because of the nature of hand dyed yarn, um, there's spots of light, spots of dark, but that's just what you get when you're dealing with hand dyed yarn, even with alternating skeins. So um, with my other sweater, my new um, technique was the Italian bind off. Pretty cool, loved it. For this one, the new technique that I used was helical knitting when I was alternating skeins. And I think, getting back on track here, that's why I don't love knitting with this one so much. Not that helical knitting is difficult. I actually think that um, it's very, very easy. But when you have a toddler, <sighs> things just get difficult. That shouldn't be that difficult. So, you know, I got my sweater. I've got this ball of yarn. I've got the other ball of yarn. And then I got the yarn snatcher. Walking around snatching all my yarn. <laughs> so, it's like any moment she can, she'll come and just snatch it up, snatch my yarn. So that part is frustrating. It's easier to knit from one ball of yarn and I can hurry up and, and snatch that when I see her coming my way than it is two balls of yarn. <laughs> so helical knitting, nothing wrong with helical knitting. It's just having two balls of yarn and a toddler in the room. <laughs> so yeah. But um, I'm trying to remember anything else I wanted to say about this one. Oh, I blocked it. That was the whole thing. So I blocked this. And the reason that I blocked it before finishing is because I wanted to see how much it grew. Girl, get your thoughts together. The whole reason that I'm doing this experiment anyway is because I was terrified that this would grow way too much after blocking and I wouldn't be able to wear it. But it ain't bad, y'all. It's not bad. So, and that's another reason why I'm more behind on this one. I blocked it. Anyway, when I measured this before blocking, I just measured from the, the little ridge here to the bottom. It was, let's see, I wrote it down. It was 15 inches before blocking. 15 inches long from here to here. So from the mid back um, down to the bottom 15 inches long and it the width was 20 and a quarter inches long so I'm like oh is it gonna grow am I going to be able to wear it is it gonna be terrible am I wasting my time so I blocked it and when I block y'all it's nothing fancy I just soak it in water lay it out I don't even have legit blocking mats I use my child's play mat <laughs> anyway laid it out took maybe like not even two days to dry. It dried super quickly. And after blocking, I was surprised. I, I was wrong in my hypothesis in the last podcast. I was like, I don't think it's going to grow in width. I mean, I know it's going to grow in length, not in width. Be quiet, Charity. You don't know what you're talking about. So when I blocked this, it did in fact grow in width. It, it grew from being 20 and a quarter inches wide to 23 inches wide across the back so i measured under the armholes from here to here it grew in width what and then i mean it makes sense to account for the increase in width it got shorter 14 inches so it went from being 14 inches long or it went from being 15 inches long to 14 inches long mind blown mind blown so that being said i'm not scared anymore <laughs> i don't think that it's going to be too long too oversized i do think that i'm going to be able to wear it in fact i think 23 inches wide if i double that that's 46 
right? Circumference. Um, and I measure my circumference of my chest to be 36. That gives me like exactly 10 inches of positive ease, which is what the designer was going for when she created the pattern. Go Charity, go Charity. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you Akira from the Knitting Annihilator podcast for encouraging me to just do it, girl. She says she knits with Superwash Merino all the time. So yeah. Okay. I know I'm all over the place today. I'm so excited to be talking to my yarn friends. Um, but the only other thing that I wanted to say about this sweater is I'm, I decided for my non-superwash sweater that I wanted to do like the dramatic um, neckline. And then for this one, I wanted to do the opposite and do a folded neckline. So I'm in the middle of that. Y'all, I was trying to have it done for the podcast today so that it would look a little more neat but I'm like halfway through because I got kids and they want to eat and play and I got lots of hair to do I mean Aiden you're gonna see he wants his hair twisted and stuff like I thought when I had a boy that I wasn't gonna have to do hair he wants his hair done all the time anyway I didn't get this finished I'm halfway through folding um this neckline down but I think it's beautiful I'm gonna hold it up oh let me do the side that I've done the most of the back side so that's gonna be super squishy and super cuddly ooh, ooh. so I just have the rest to do and this is also um, not too difficult the only thing that I have to be careful of when I do this is making sure that I line up so the front of the collar, well the bottom of the collar with the top making sure that it's not going to be like twisted this way when I do it. Which on my last sweater that I did a folded neckline, it was twisted so I'm trying to make sure that it's not twisted this time. And then I'm also trying to make sure that it's not too tight. I've got the stitches here, they're live from where I did my knit to pearl to rib. And I'm basically picking up the stitches that are already on the inside from where I picked up the stitches to make the collar. And I'm knitting that together with the live stitches and then binding them off. So if you've never done that before, that's super easy. Easier than the Italian bind off. And I like this better than just using my darning needle to do a folded collar. Stitches are live. I'll knit them together with the stitches that I used to pick up. Boom. Finished. Although it took, okay, it took me a long time because I got children. But anyway, <laughs> those are my sweaters. And so, so far, I guess my final words would be, I like them both for different reasons. I like making the non-superwash sweater a little better because it's easier for me. I've got the one ball of yarn and I think that I like feeling and I don't know maybe I'll like wearing this more. We shall see. I don't know but I like maybe I like them equally like I don't have to pick. I don't have to have a favorite. I can just like them both because of their the unique qualities of both. And speaking of the unique qualities of yarn I wanted to show you a book that I got. Um, so the reason that I got this yarn was because I felt pressured to buy it. Well, not to buy it. It was totally my intent to buy this. But when I went home and had my little mini panic attack about superwash yarn, and then I went back to the store to try to return it, I felt pressured to keep the yarn. And I felt like I didn't really have a defense for why I wanted to return it. But I'm glad I didn't return it and I kept it. All that being said, I want to know what I'm talking about. I want to know what I'm talking about so that when I go into a yarn store, I'm confident in my choice. I'm not second guessing myself because I've done my research. So I decided to buy a book. It's called The Hand Knitter's Yarn Guide. And it's a visual reference to yarn weights and fibers. 
I don't know if you've ever seen this book, but it's something that I just came across on Amazon when I was looking for books. I want to know about the fibers that I'm using. And I shop on Amazon a lot because I, can't, I don't get out a lot. So this one came up on Amazon and I bought it. And when I got it, I was like, yeah, like this is exactly, exactly the kind of book, the book, kind of book that I want. So um, it talks about the different yarn categories. Um, super fine like the different yarn weights it explains yarn weights and then it also explains um, yarn fibers and it breaks it up to animal breaks it up into animal fibers and they call it vegetable fibers but plant fibers and then also synthetic fibers and then even more textured fibers like chenille and boucle what have you but anyway, it, it goes into detail about all different kinds of fibers so that when I am looking for a fiber for a particular sweater or what have you, garment, I can go to this book and say, okay, I think that I'm going to go with alpaca for this one because according to the text, teacher in me has to come out, according to the text, it says that alpaca is really not going to give um, stitch definition. So I don't know if I'm making like a cabled sweater, then I'm not going to use alpaca. But if I don't care about stitch definition, then I'm going to use alpaca. Oh, and alpaca has wonderful drape. Like, yeah, this book just has all the knowledge, all the things that I need. It even talks about um, calculating yarn s substitutes, how to do that, how to read yarn label, yarn labels, yarn labels. Yeah, so I think that this is going to help me with my anxiety so that when I go into that yarn store, I know what I'm looking for and I know why. And I really do also like that there are visual swatches in here that kind of show you what you're going to get when you use certain fibers. Oh, the teacher in me just, I'm excited about this. So I will be using that in the future. I think I did say that I'm going all out of order in terms of how people typically do their podcasts. And I know I'm all over the place today, but it's okay. It's okay. So the next thing that I wanted to show you was, um, my only finished object. <laughs> it's been hard, y'all. I've had to take a lot of breaks because just of the techniques that I've been using for the sweaters. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot of picking up stitches when you do drop shoulder sweaters. And that was really hard wearing on my hands. Also a lot of purling. And I don't know how many people like purling, but girl, I do not like purling. So once I started knitting in a round and I took some breaks, learned some stretches, my hands started to feel better. So anyway, I only have this finished object. It's my one finished object. And this is a headband, you can call it, or the reason I want to wear it is so that they warm my ears, so ear warmers. Um, and I am using leftover yarn from the hat that I showed you in a couple of podcasts, but it is Malabrigo um, Chunky, and the colorway is Rhodesian Ridgeback. And this is 100% Merino wool. It is a non-superwash wool. It comes in skeins of 104 yards, 100 grams. And so I made this out of pure necessity when I wear my hair in a bun my ears are freezing when I'm out at car rider duty I'm a teacher by the way <laughs> I hadn't said that this podcast so I'm outside a lot putting kids in their car and I need something to keep my ears warm when my hair is up I mean I guess I could also do it when my hair is down but I don't know I did not follow a pattern for this I was like but in in the past when I crocheted um, I made some of these and so I remembered how to seam it together I knew it was just you know a rectangle so I decided I wasn't gonna follow a pattern for this <laughs> and that's why I knit it three times and that also contributed to my hand pain this month because I used size 10 needles for this and um, it hurts it hurts
okay and knitting two sweaters and all those things I was doing with those my hands were hurting anyway um, I knit this three times so the first time I cast it on 14 stitches I was like that looks about right that looks about right let me do this in two by two rib two by two rib is beautiful it's my favorite kind of ribbing favorite favorite <laughs> give me words Lord my favorite kind of ribbing in fact I'm doing it on both of those sweaters um, but it contracts a whole lot so when I knit this the first time um, it was too skinny and I was like well 14 stitches is not enough it's too narrow let me pull it out and start over and so I pulled it out started over and I increased to about 18 stitches still wanted to do two by two rib because I enjoy the look of it so I increased to 18 stitches knit the whole thing finished it I think it was about 21 centimeters long when I finished it and I will insert a picture of what it looked like I'm a little congested <laughs> my gosh anyway that's it so it was too narrow I even finished it well I didn't do the final finishing I tried it because I knew it was too skinny and I just kind of pinned it with some hair pins wore it at car rider duty and my ears were sticking out like it defeated the whole purpose of me making the headband so I ripped it out and did it again and so this time I I used 24 stitches I do believe and I said I love two by two rib but it's it's just not being nice to me and so I decided to do one by one rib so I knit one purled one and it looks great and so I knit it to be about I wanted to knit it to about 19 inches because I like a tight fitted headband I don't know what it is I don't want it to be sliding in any way um, but I was kind of in the rhythm the other day when I was working from home and kind of got lost in the track of time and knit a little too far so I wanted it to be about 19 inches long but it ended up being around 20 close to 21 again but anyway I went ahead and seamed it together and when I seamed it I used a crochet hook and oh my gosh that was awesome because I tend to break darning needles when I use bulky weight yarn so the crochet hook was like easy peasy lemon squeezy did a little twist and I'll insert a picture of me wearing it and this one is wide enough covers my ears warm it's not itchy wonderful 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 I do not want to knit any of these anymore this season maybe next season three times is enough okay three times is enough that is my only finished object <laughs> the only other work in progress I have is a dishcloth I can't believe that I have never knit dishcloths like for real why didn't I start out with dishcloths? Anyway, the reason that I am knitting, uh, girl, oh, okay, I thought the stitches fell. The reason that I am knitting a dishcloth is because um, if you watched my very rough intro, or let's call it a pilot episode for this podcast, um, you will know that during the pandemic, I try to teach my aunts how to knit. Hey aunties, I think some of them watch. Hey y'all. Um, but that was difficult because we were doing it via Zoom. It was virtual. And they, they learned a little bit, but they didn't really learn what they wanted to learn and they're still interested. So I have decided to teach them how to knit again. Um, we can call it a knitting class, but really I want it to be like a knitting group in the future where we can just get together and knit and chat and uh, I'm so excited. So I'm teaching them how to knit and I figured the first thing that I want them to knit um, are dishcloths. And so here's mine. <clears throat> just garter stitch. We have met, I think, about two times now, and they actually haven't started their dishcloths, and I stopped 
um, in the middle of this one because I didn't want to get too ahead of them. The thing that I had them do first was just knit um, a couple of swatches with some acrylic yarn just so they can get the idea of what to do. And then I want them to knit their dishcloths. Okay. Um, so this is this will be their first project, but right now they're just knitting with acrylic yarn. And I am a teacher, but I am not a knitting teacher. Okay, I'm just a knitter and I like to knit and I want them to knit with me. So we are watching um, the tutorial that I learned to knit from, Marley Bird's tutorial on how to knit. And in that video, she teaches her mom how to knit. She uses like the most well thought out um, language and cues to help you you know remember the steps and kind of know what you're doing and I think it's like a four part series brilliant so we're using that during our knitting class and they're doing so well I'm so proud of them and I cannot wait to meet with them again and so that we can knit our dishcloths I got this yarn from the Walmart it is 100% cotton yarn and it is peaches and cream and this colorway is stripey I hope I'm in the camera I think no it's a self striping yarn <laughs> the colorway is flannel the colorway is flannel and it is called stripey it's a self striping yarn and this is um, really cool because I've never knit with cotton before and it's super slippery so I'm glad I picked up these plastic needles but it kind of just gives me some experience with cotton yarn and so this summer if I find a pattern that uses cotton then I'll kind of know what I'm dealing with there so there's that and then the only other thing that I wanted to share is my future cast on a future cast on which is a hat and let me pull it up here Ravelry so the next project that I want to uh, make is the big hair much care hat you know how they typically say big hair don't care that is definitely me the bigger my hair the better but this is called the big hair much care hat and it is designed by Fatima Hines um, and I was actually talking to her on Instagram and um, because I liked a video that she put out about her hat and we just started a conversation and we were talking about how women of color or women with natural hair curly hair big hair struggle with finding hats that fit them and so that's why I want to wear or I want to make this hat and of course wear this hat she was just telling me that um, she's excited for me to make it and she wants me to let her know you know my experience and I cannot wait to do that I decided to use this color or and this yarn the yarn snatcher got into it y'all it it's a mess but it is beautiful it is beautiful okay um and so this is their sock base or fingering weight yarn it's 100 percent superwash merino wool i said there it's malabrigo i'm like obsessed with malabrigo right now and the color is teal feather and I really wanted to go ahead and start this because my girl from the quirky Monday podcast um, I gotta remember your name I don't want to mess up your name that's why I'm not saying it I, I've been hearing it in my head but it might not be right but she is doing a um, make along and it's the Pisces make along and I know that they're using like blues water you know and I want to enter that make along but I've got to see how long it's gonna last because I haven't been able to wind this up yet but this is the color that I'm going to use to make the big hair much care hat and I definitely wanted this 100% um, superwash merino wool because it's super super soft and hopefully this hat will be big enough the one of the key features of this hat is that it has that little split at the back so that all your hair won't be bunched up and you kind of give your hair room to breathe back there so Lord if this works for me I'm gonna be making so many of these oh my goodness and that is all y'all 
Stay tuned for Aiden's 15 minutes. See you later. All right. Welcome back to Aiden's 15 minutes of stardom. This segment is not going to be dad jokes. I asked Aiden, you know, it's been a while since you've been in the podcast. What would you like to do for your segment? He didn't want to do dad jokes this time. So I'm going to call this segment, or we're going to call this segment, Ask Aiden. So I said, Aiden, what if I just interview you? But it's got to be knitting related because we know that that's what my viewers want to hear. So he said, yeah? Yeah. Are you with me? You right here? Yeah. He said that he was good with doing an interview. So this will be a knitting interview. Ask Aiden is the name of this segment. All right, Aiden. So the first question is, if I, meaning me, mommy, if I am not knitting, don't look. <laughs> He's trying to look ahead at the questions. If I am not knitting, then what am I doing? Me, mommy. Uh, sometimes you read the Bible and to get ready for Bible study. Mm -hmm. Taking care of little Miss Aubrey. Mm -hmm. That's that's mostly what you were doing because she cannot be left alone. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, Aiden. I mean. I like that. You're making me look good here. No. Because <laughs> they would say that I knit all the time, right? No, you don't. She doesn't. She's been um, laying off on the knitting recently. Okay. Yeah, because I have other things to do, right? Yeah, other things to do. She's not just a knitter. She has two children. She has to do work because she's, she's, she's a school teacher. She has to help me with homework. She has to take care of Aubrey 24-7 because you cannot leave her. Her right by herself all right thanks Aiden okay next question who do you think is my favorite podcaster you subscribe to so many channels <laughs> how am I supposed to know because <laughs> lord knows when I am knitting I am definitely watching podcasts so who is my favorite podcaster just take a guess I mean I don't even know that I have a favorite but who do you see me watching a lot well, I was going to say Keen John Boutique, but you, we haven't been, you haven't been watching that recently. You're getting into new stuff. Well, she, she hadn't posted for a while, but she's yeah. back now. She had some family stuff. But Rochelle from Queen's Yarn, Boots, Queen's Yarn Boutique, I do love to watch you. Our um, North Carolina accents just crack me up. I feel like we both sound the same. So, Queen's Yarn Boutique. Aiden calls you Queen. I said, Aiden, I'm pretty sure her name is Rochelle. Well, that's that's the name of her team. Um, so, who else? You do watch that. What's her name? The, a newer one that I've been watching? No, what's her name? Who? The one that um, speaks Spanish. The one that has a Speak up. The one that has the Hispanic accent. Um, hers is new to me. Let me see. Okay. <laughs> we got confused because there are two people that I watch with kind of foreign accents, and Aiden's really into Spanish. We've talked about how he takes Spanish class. She said that, um, <coughs> the one that I said that, that has a Spanish accent, I think. Speak up, Aiden. She said the one that has, um... I thought that had a Spanish accent is Italian. So yes. I'm, so I'm so sorry. I can't think of her name. I usually think of people in terms of their podcast name. but I'm sorry. Her podcast name, I don't think she watches Aiden, is We Grow Wild. She has a great podcast. Um, she definitely does a lot of knitting, but then other content related to... Um, like making things with her hands. Her and her husband are really trying to create a lifestyle where they um, make everything themselves. So that's We Grow Wild. And then the other one that was newer that I've started watching recently, her podcast name is Remedy Fibers. And she also has like a Spanish accent, um, I think, or it just sounds like she's from like Hispanic heritage. So hers is Remedy Fibers. So those are some of the podcasts that I enjoy watching that he notices. Okay, Aiden. Next 
question. What was the first thing you ever saw me knitting or crocheting? Because I started out with crocheting. What is the first thing you remember me making? I gotta look back to the end of 2020 and 2021 to get this. Yeah. Well, actually, I started making with um, crochet before 2020. Probably 2019. 2019. I don't know if you remembered anything that you saw me make. Make Not in 2019, I didn't pay attention. Well, what's the first thing you remember me making with yarn? I remember. Uh-huh. Uh, I really, this is hard, this is hard. You gotta sit up so you're in the camera. This is hard. Um, I have to think so far back. Sorry. Because COVID happened and I guess that's when you started getting it a lot. Knitting, yeah. Yeah. When do you remember me making? Can I go back to 2022 because that's the most recent year. Alright, whatever you remember. What do you remember me making? I remember From you. back oh! then. Way back when. Um, 2021, I think. 2021 or 2020, you made me a hat. You I made did. me some socks. Yeah. Yeah, you With made all those thing. colors. With all those colors. Yeah. I still have those. I'll insert pictures of those. Those were actually... Well, the hat was crochet, and um, I wanted to, I used a stitch that I wanted it to look like knitting, even though I didn't know how to knit yet. I'll insert a picture. And then the socks were my first ever attempt at making slipper socks. Woo! They were atrocious, but it's okay. It was one of my first attempts at knitting. Okay. What is, what do you think is my favorite thing to, thing to make? these days what do you think is my favorite thing to make so many people have said things that you've knit knitted before but but what do you see me knitting a lot now so i started with crocheting hats back then i moved into socks now you're doing like sweaters and speak up now you're doing like sweaters and scarves and what do you think is my favorite thing to knit right now? Sweaters, scarves, socks. You do have a whole pile of slipper socks over there. These are regular socks, but oh, they I are. The, the, she literally has a pile of those right there Love in different them. colors. So you, you do, think socks? But you do try to knit sweaters. I'd say, you, I'd say from my visual clues, socks. <laughs> Your visual clues. Yes. <laughs> All right. I do have more pairs of socks than I do sweaters. Sometimes right now I'm on a sweater kick, but I am looking forward to making some more socks pretty soon. She she wears them around the house most of the time, too. Yeah. You just don't see. Okay. And what have I made you? Well, we kind of already talked about that. What like have I made you? And the socks. Yeah. So the last question is, what would you like for me to make you. Now that you've seen my skills have grown, I can make more things. What would you like for me to make you? Do you even want me to make you something? And if so, what? Well, I know you put a lot of work and effort into the things that you make me. Mm -hmm. And I do like them, they're very detailed. They last forever. So what would you like for me to make you next? I'd say a sweater. A sweater? A pretty cool, sort of colorful sweater. Oh. So maybe in the fall, I'll make you a pretty cool, colorful sweater. That's on the record. He has asked for it. So I think I can do that. Now, the next question is, and the last question, which is an extension of that question, are you knit worthy? Gosh. <laughs> I've worn the socks. I wore the socks a whole day, but they're itchy. They were. Now, I made his socks and I made his hat before I kind of knew how to pick yarn that would be more comfortable on the skin. So and they're sort of itchy. They might have been polyester. I don't know about acrylic. Acrylic can be on the softer side. They might have been polyester, polyester. And he didn't find those very soft. So, what was your answer? You said... They were itchy. They were itchy. So, I, I tried to wear them a full day. <laughs> Poor A. <laughs> he was a good sport. So if I make you something else, it's going to be out of something super soft. 
or when I make you something else because you already put your request in for a sweater like so I feel this yeah I'd say I w oh like a sweater out of something like that yeah but you I'd want colors I'd say I was I could even wear the sweater to school because people know you knit but people don't know you knit for children Knit sweaters. So if I use a soft yarn, you're cool with it. You'll be knit worthy. Yeah, I will. Especially on those cold days because, you know, some days, even in summer, we can have freezing days. Yeah. All right. Well, Aiden, that is our segment, Ask Aiden. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching today's episode of the podcast. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It helps the channel so very much. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Can I get a prize?